Okay. How are you? Good morning, Instagram. Um, so, just having a walk today, no running. Still with the buggy. Still getting the kids out to get some fresh air. A bit of mental and physical exercise. Um, so, yes, uh, I wanted to, I saw something interesting online um, regarding somebody asked a question about, um, I want to avoid trails uh, because it's more difficult to uh, maintain social distancing when you're running. Um, and the person said, I want to, I'm considering running on roads. And yes, that is your hat, Dylan. Fantastic. There will be a slight crossover conversation between me and my eldest. Um, so yes, um, yeah, good question. Um, the person asked in a, on a Facebook feed and there was a, obviously a lot of replies from people um, who uh, prefer running on trails, prefer running on uh, the pavement. Um, uh, this person asked about footwear as well, so you can imagine there was an awful lot of replies came about the best footwear to run on the pavement. So, um, yeah, I thought I would just rattle off some of my thoughts on the subject about... Uh, yeah, running on different surfaces and which footwear suits what um, and so on. So, first things first. Um, is running on the pavement more dangerous for you than running uh, off-road? Well, guess what? Dun, 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 drum roll. Depends on the person, um, as always. Sorry, you're going to get sick of that, but once some um, runners get that... Uh, into their repertoire of reasoning, it depends on you, uh, then that can avoid a lot of pitfalls of just copying what works for somebody else. Um, running on surfaces, different surfaces, let's just make it hard surface and a soft surface, okay? So it's, it's fascinating how the body reacts uh, to running on surfaces. The easiest way to kind of uh, appreciate how the body looks after us is imagine what your legs do for example let's have the ultimate soft surface let's have a trampoline let's imagine if you jump down off a ledge onto a trampoline okay so um big bouncy soft surface your body in prepare in preparation for that bouncy soft surface what's it going to do is it going to tighten your legs up and make you stiff as a board or is it going to relax you down um, and make you all kind of floppy. Well, if you're on a trampoline, obviously your body tightens up, it does it automatically. Um, and this is exactly what happens when you're running and you land on softer surfaces, when you're off-road, when you're on grass, uh, definitely when you're on sand, your body does stiffen up, okay? Uh, the muscles stiffen so that you can actually control uh, that landing on a soft surface. Let's look at the other um, part of this analogy. Imagine if you jumped and you landed on concrete. So you've jumped off a ledge and you've landed on concrete. What's your body going to do now? Is it going to stay stiff as a board? No, 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 no. Um, it's going to relax, isn't it? As you land, you're going to bend your legs, bend your ankles, you're going to flex a bit more automatically so that you can absorb the higher impact of landing on a harder surface. So there's an incredible system in your body where your nervous system and brain is continuously monitoring um, the feedback it gets, every step you take. Um, so if the feedback from that last step is that you're on a slightly more spongy, bouncy surface, then it will tighten up your muscles um, and stiffen you up like the board so that you can actually continue to run on that uh, softer surface. If you suddenly land on a harder surface, then your body will relax those muscles down um, and it'll flex the joints a bit more to accommodate landing on that half a surface. And it happens every single footstep to allow to protect you, okay? Because that's what our body does. It's a beautiful, amazing thing. It looks after us. Uh, the brain's very good at it because the brain is, is the brain. It's very clever. It's kind of its, uh, yeah, it's, its job role. So with regards to what's better for you running on harder surfaces or softer surfaces it very much depends on the individual in the sense that is your body better equipped to run more like a stiff board with the muscles kind of taut and contracted um, to allow you to run on softer surfaces or is it more equipped for you to run 
uh, with more of a relaxed joints, relaxed muscles, um, equipping you to run on a hard surface. So it depends on the individuals and some studies have actually linked different running injuries to um, different running surfaces in this way <clears throat> with the idea that if your body is contracting those muscles to tighten you up into a board um, it could potentially increase the risk of certain running injuries and the opposite if you're always running um, on a harder surfaces and you're relaxing the body um, then um, it's going to lead to different stresses on different tissues and a different category of injury. So it's not a yes or no question, basically, as ever with running injuries. It depends on your body. So ultimately, it boils down to you testing it, as always. Trial and error. Make sense? Before I continue with that, let's just say hello to Bikes and Laces, who is in the house again. Hi, Jess. How are you doing? I'm looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday next the 14th I believe where we're going to talk about strength and conditioning so do join us people if you're watching this on Facebook so I'm going to put the recording up on Facebook then make sure you follow at Bikes and Laces uh, so you uh, can join us for an Instagram live myself and Jess from Bikes and Laces next Tuesday at 11 o'clock GMT uh, looking forward to it um, I've watched some of your videos Jess really good I love the one on sleep uh, excellently presented I do recommend people have a little look at that it's really really refreshing very nice um, okay, so back to surfaces. Um, yeah, it um, all depends on the person. It's trial and error. You may find that you are somebody who picks up more niggles running off-road, and you may find you're somebody who picks up more niggles running on uh, harder surfaces like pavement uh, or the beach seafront or something. It is trial and error. Potentially there are things you can change if you need to run on one of those surfaces, depending on exercise choice and the way you perform the exercises, which is a road we won't go down now. Maybe we're touching it um, on Tuesday with bikes and, uh, with, uh, bikes and laces. But um, ultimately, yeah, trial and error. So new runners, don't kind of freak out and avoid it if you think, oh, I can only run on the concrete. That's going to be really bad for my joints. There's no evidence for that. It might be bad for you, but it might be great for you. It might be better for you than running off-road. And there's lots of different variables to consider. Right, um, second part of the question which I saw on Facebook was, what shoes should I wear? So, do I risk saying it depends on you? It kind of does, I'm afraid. Um, this is why it's quite... It's, it's never black and white. As soon as you see someone saying, oh, you have to wear these pairs of shoes, these work for me perfectly... Um, this is where often the barefoot thing and the minimalist thing kind of comes up again and and people who are, uh, who find that barefoot works for them or minimalistic shoes works for them are very 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 quick to shout about it um, all over Facebook and Twitter and say it's the only way and and, and it is uh, not the only way um, it works for them but it doesn't work for anybody. A bit like veganism. If you're a vegan and you're happy and it works for you, then great, but it's not going to work for everybody. We're not all the same. Um, anyway, so watch out for warnings uh, or advice saying, oh yeah, you have to do this. Uh, there's no research, no evidence, which suggests that there's a one size fits all for anything to do with running, apart from running on your legs um, instead of your hands, which generally works better for most people. So with regards to shoe choice, Again, it depends on the individual trial and error. Okay, if you need a base place to start, then find something which probably has a little bit of cushioning just to see what it feels like. Um, it kind of makes sense to move towards less cushioning and less weight and less structure, but it will depend on the person. There's some people indeed who put on a cushion pair of shoes and um, Maybe again, because their body is reacting to more cushioning and stiffening up, it leads to a series of niggles. And they're actually better off wearing less shoe, less structure, um, so that their uh, body uh, reacts in a different way because it's landing um, on a harder surface and relaxing those joints a bit more and, and the muscles. So it really is trial and error. Um, the best bit of advice I saw in this thread with regards to shoe selection for trail and off-road was... 
make sure when it comes to shoes that you don't actually make a sudden change. Um, the research is pretty clear in that any sudden change from, for example, a very big structured shoe, a uh, very uh, kind of heavily structured cushion shoe to something without any structure um, and uh, without any kind of drop or anything which has got a big sudden change can lead to uh, niggles and pains and injury simply because you're shocking your body. Okay, a lot of injury, as I said before in these little Q&As and chats and things, is about shocking your body in a, in a, in a different um, load, a different type of load. So if you do go from some kind of heavily cushioned shoe to a, a very minimalistic shoe, or indeed no shoes at all, suddenly you're exposing your body to, to very different loads, different amounts, different areas of your body, different joint loading, and different way of running, probably, if you're not wearing any shoes. Can your body cope with that sudden change? Well, it depends. Some people can. In a lot of cases, you're going to get a warning, you're going to get a niggle, you're going to get a pain. If you're trying to ignore it, it's going to increase. So, yeah, avoid the sudden changes, if that makes sense. Uh, but experiment. There's quite an interesting idea based on only one bit of research, but it's again, it's uh, something to play around with. Get some variety, maybe, in the type of shoes you wear. When you put on different types of shoes, it's almost like changing whether you're running on a trampoline or whether you're running on um, a concrete. You're kind of playing around with how your body's going to react. Um, as soon as you change the type of shoe you wear, and um, the loads your body has to deal with when you run will be modified. Okay, You can't get rid of running loads. Um, all you can do is shift it around and move it from tissue to tissue. So... There is what works for some people, um, and it's only one bit of research, but it kind of makes sense as well, is rather than subjecting your body to exactly the same load again and again and again on exactly the same tissues um, in exactly the same way, which is the equivalent of kind of like tapping on a mouse button the same way over and over again in office and wondering why your, your wrist starts hurting, um, maybe mixing it up a little bit. So finding different types of shoes... Um, just so that load varies. Maybe also varying the kind of surface you run on. Maybe for some people to get overall strong and resilient, it's a good idea to get some variability. Sometimes run on hard ground, sometimes run on soft ground, sometimes on um, kind of off-road, maybe sometimes even a little, little, little bit of uh, barefoot, but very short and introductory, just to get your body used to different uh, loads. That makes sense. Although, I must admit, when talking to the very talented and charismatic J.F. Esculia um, from Canada of the, um, the running clinic, he pointed out if you want to get stronger, if you want to make muscles stronger, there's an argument that really you need to keep subjecting the muscles to the same stimulus so they do get stronger. If you keep mixing it up, you're never actually going to get that particular set of muscles stronger, which kind of makes sense. Um, that was a very interesting point he raised on the podcast. I can't remember which episode it was now, but all my podcasts are on One Chat Live, and I definitely recommend if you're interested in shoes and footwear, then check out the One Chat Live podcast with Jeff Esculia. Check out the one with um, Simon Bartold, it's very interesting. Check out the one with Ian Griffiths, who kind of puts to bed the whole overpronation paradigm. Um, and, and other people. Chris Johnson's probably worth checking out. It's very hard to talk about running and not get into shoes, so have a little look through the list of people there. Um, and if it's worth repeating again, I mean, I did see in this particular Facebook feed with this question regarding, oh, what shoes should I wear for running? Uh, without naming any names, and I'm not having a go, it's just it happens all the time in these feeds. Somebody started saying, oh, you need to go and see if you're an overpronator or an oversupinator. I think somebody actually said, I've had years of experience, I've done a lot of research, and it's all about overpronation and underpronation and blah, blah, blah. Come on, people, let's put that to bed now. Um, choosing your shoes, depending on how much your arch drops, is, um, is a has-been gone, needs to be deleted. Um, slowly it's disappearing from the main uh, websites. I think Brooks got rid of the word overpronation. Um, I think other... Websites have still got it there. Little pictures of wet footprint tests and stuff like that. It's old, it's gone, it has been, it's not proved, it's been disproved. Please don't 
ever base your shoe selection on on somebody telling you how much you pronate or over pronate or under pronate sorry it's not there you may as well flip a coin go by comfort make sense go by testing what works for you personally make it subjective um, and don't make big changes there we go right oh i do love rattling on don't i but it's such a beautiful day have a little look we'll take a pause for some scenery this program is sponsored by the beautiful sea there you go um, right, let's have a look, say hello to a few people in the house. Bikes and Laces have already said hello too, just come back from a run. And well done everybody who is managing to keep to exercise and stay um, aware. It's, it's really important as runners that if you are going out, you do overdo the social distancing because, you know, the humans love bitching and blaming categories and blaming someone else in groups. So runners are bound to get a hard time, same as cyclists probably do. Uh, people will always love to point the finger so it's up to you especially if we're going to keep this country allowing people to do exercise to get that extra birth you know everybody should be doing it anyway you should be exaggerating it take three meters around um, but especially if you're doing exercise and someone's walking along give them a lot of birth you don't want that person complaining and rattling on somewhere else and encouraging uh, some terrible decision to be made like let's not let anyone exercise at all um, so anyway but keep it up I believe uh, the fun running I only get a little bit of name so hi the fun running uh, Gazimplin hello how are you doing thanks for joining us um, Chris Kitson's in the house hi Chris how are you doing are you managed to get some exercise done Chris I know you got your hands full with the kids and stuff um, you're putting out some fantastic videos yourself Chris thank you very much um, if you're not familiar with Chris's work Chris Kitson he's putting out some great um, videos and uh, food for thoughts as well as well as providing online consultation uh, like myself so um there you go shout out for chris kitson definitely worth checking out across all the social media platforms and hi as well to mr c tierney how you doing right i'm nearing home um i was thinking just making uploading just one of these every saturday to facebook but uh, to youtube but I, don't know, I kind of think a lot of the information I give could be useful to somebody, so I think I'll start uploading them, just all of them. Um, otherwise, it just disappears, doesn't it? It's a problem with Instagram and Facebook. It hasn't got a life, hasn't got a shelf life. So I think I will start uploading these kind of 30, 40 minute chats to YouTube so they're there forever. So if you are looking for a back catalogue of some bearded guy talking to you either after a run or as he pushes his kids around, then uh, have a look on YouTube. Right. Enjoy the rest of the day, respect social distancing, extra birth if you're running or cycling, just to keep the rest of the world happy. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you hopefully tomorrow after a run, given that today is my walking day. Uh, take care. I will give you, uh, let's fade out to some beach huts. See you later.